Jeez, has it really been this long since I made a video review? Okay, let's see. What's an easy and short CDI game to ease me back into this business? Let's see. Hello. What's this? Steel machine, eh? Huh. Well, it says right there it only has six enemies. How hard can that be on CDI? I think I found myself a game to review. Let's go. Check it out! Take that level! <sighs> One. Well, so much for this winter's Christmas special. Steel Machine for the CDI, a game seemingly left forgotten even amongst those who did own a CDI system, which is honestly kind of strange seeing that this game was released very early in CDI's lifespan all the way back in 1993, although only in Europe for some strange reason. This game was made by the amazing group of SPC Vision, also known as The Vision Company, who you might know from some of the best games for the system such as The Apprentice and Looky Look the video game. This was their second CDI game after Alien Gate and just like their first attempt, Steel Machine is a shooter. Is the sequel? Well I don't really know, because honestly the story is pretty much non-existent here. You've got these big bad battle cruisers heading towards this planet and even the lost hope that this titular ship sounds rather uninspired by just calling it the Steel Machine. The cover doesn't try to impress either, what are the menu buttons even doing on there? Whatever, who needs a fancy box anyway, as long as the game's good, right? And is it? Well, kind I guess. Steel Machine feels and plays a lot like one of my favorite games on the Commodore 64, Euridium. So that's a good start. Euridium, or the lazy NES cache known as the Lost Starfighter, is a fast-paced horizontal shooter in which you fly over a giant battleship, battling smaller fighters whilst avoiding collisions with parts of the battleship with the eventual goal of destroying the entire thing. This was done by destroying enough defenses until you were allowed to land the ship, so that then the pilot could presumably sabotage the dreadnoughts from the inside. It was a lot of fun and played great. This game was heavily inspired by that idea. You control the steel machine and fly over a giant battleship and fight different enemies as you go along. At the end you will find a power reactor that needs destroying in order to blow up the entire ship and beat the level. And this is where there is one big difference which makes Steel Machine a lot less fun than Uridium. You see, the main reactor is protected by a giant laser barrier, and to get rid of that you will need to blow up a couple of other power nodes scattered across the ship. This task is made extremely hard and tedious as your pea shooter won't harm the reactors. That would make things too easy now wouldn't it? No, you will need some bigger firepower to do some real damage. And being the last hope for a planet seems to have put a lot of pressure on this pilot since apparently he is forgotten to stock up on anything that goes boom. Fortunately for him, enemies do carry compatible armaments, which can be randomly dropped by dispatching them. So you need to hunt for some fighter squadrons and other nasties to get yourself some missiles in order to use the force of explosions to blow up all of the reactors. Now here's the bad part. Each reactor takes 3 missile hits, and a pickup gives you one whole missile to work with. This means that in each level you'll need to spend like 7 minutes or so just surviving while collecting the required missiles to finish the level. Making matters even worse, you can only carry a maximum of 9 missiles, which isn't nearly enough as you'll need at least 15 per level, and that is counting on you not missing or some rogue bullet intercepting your projectile as it's on its way to do its job. Luckily you do have a life bar, which does give you at least a bit of a fighting chance I suppose. Some things like walls and the fighter carriers are still instant death though. 
enemies might also drop some standard items, you know, stuff like auto fire, more bullets, lasers, shield repair, extra lives and the have a nice day device which hurts all enemies on screen. Make sure to grab them power ups quickly though as they do have a tendency to drift off screen into the depths of space never to be seen again. But let's assume you do catch them in time, well, even with power ups it becomes pretty hard to find a safe haven, especially in the later levels. It just gets too crowded to collect those required missiles. The battleships themselves are also armed with turrets and missiles you can't permanently get rid of. So you are continuously bombarded from every direction and it just gets really unfair. It's a shame that the missile hunting ruins the experience because honestly, otherwise the game plays fine. It's responsive and can be really fast, something you don't see much on CDI. Button 1 is for your guns and button 2 is for your missiles, simple as that. Press both together to pause the game, which might sound trivial, but back in 1993 not many CDI games did that. Interestingly enough, there's also an option to select your control device, though I'm not really sure what that does exactly. One thing you will most definitely need to get used to when it comes down to the controls is the way the ship accelerates, decelerates and turns. You can go both ways, but when you turn you fling yourself across the screen. If there's something in the way that will kill you, well, you're dead as hell, son. This is particularly unfair when you reach the end of the ship and find the force field is still operational. You can't go back at that point as that also means instant death. Fair, huh? You want to master the art of stopping your ship and slightly adjusting its speed. It can be very easy to overshoot and go hurling across the screen at first. But once you do get used to it, it is very doable. I found that the best way to hunt for missiles is to stop the ship near an enemy hangar where it's relatively safe and murder anything that decides to pop out. To help there's a radar at the top which you can use to follow enemy movements and prevent those bosses from backstabbing you. To get through this game you will need every advantage you can get. Some rabbit feet might also be mandatory as well as your sanity pills. But honestly, no matter how hard you work for it, that energy bar isn't gonna last you long and sooner, probably not later. You'll be dead, out of lives and... Uh, thanks for rubbing it in there, Private Hudson. Huh, imagine that, someone actually used that quote into a commercially released game. Awesome. The game gracefully allows you to start at any level you've reached thus far, so you can continue towards that end goal of beating all 6 ships. I wonder if anyone has ever actually managed to do that though. It's just so ridiculously hard, tedious and altogether frustrating that I can't imagine anyone could muster up the patience required to beat this sucker. The difficulty actually made me reach out to the programmer of the game, Stefan Postuma, to see if he might have any tips or cheats that would enable me to show more of the game and get some background info in the process. He sent me a couple of amazing and very informative emails in return. Unfortunately, he didn't remember any cheats for the game. He did give me a lot of insight in his work on CDI however. In short, it was his experience in the demo scene and familiarity with the Atari ST processor, which is similar to the one the CDI uses, that got him experimenting with the hardware, which in turn led to the forming of a team of ex-demo coders over at SPC to make some games. They used their extensive whiskittery skills, great music and some beer to create some of the best games for the platform. It really shows that these guys were putting a lot of effort into each project and were actively finding out the actual possibilities of the hardware. Even in an early game as this. Not only is it competently built, the presentation is also solid, with custom, interesting graphics and a rather unique soundtrack. By the way, this is also one of the few CDI ready format discs, which basically means that if you like the music you can just pop it into your CD player and enjoy it. This game does not make use of the digital video cartridge, it wasn't around yet I suppose. Thus we run into the problem of having to make a choice between either music or sound effects. Not a very hard decision to make in my opinion as the sound effects are rather poor and generic. There is also too much action for the limited sound channels to keep up with. So you can end up with some muted sounds either way. The music can totally carry the experience on its own though, and if you ever do tire of one particular track you can always change it in the pause menu. To draw a final conclusion, I find it hard to fully recommend getting this game. In a way it certainly is impressive and I like how they showed what's possible on CDI. Being an early game it's also fairly cheap and easy to find. Impressive as it is though, it just gets more frustrating than fun fast. 
Also add to that that for shoot 'em up, and I can't believe I'm going to use these terms in relation to this genre, there is just way too much grinding and camping involved. So if you get it in a stack, it's worth a look, but I wouldn't go out hunting for it. For this review I'd like to say a special thank you to Stefan Postema for sharing some information and allowing me to share it with everyone. Most of it did fall outside of the scope of this review however. If you want to read up on it, and I highly recommend that you do, then please follow the link down in the description. You'll be in for a real treat and get some insight on the early days of CDI over at SPC and some of the big names of the demo scene of the past, many of whom are still kicking it in the gaming industry of today. And with that, all that's left for me at the moment is to thank everyone for watching once again. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did then do please let me know and perhaps even share it with your friends, it would help me out greatly and I'd be much obliged, thanks in advance. For now, happy gaming and until next time, take care! Stupid game thinks it can beat me. I wanna see that ending, damn it. I'll show you who's most stubborn. Come on, Sam. Keep it together. You're almost there. Almost have it. Yes! Yes! Level 6 beat! Yeah, I did it! I am awesome! <sighs> now for that well deserved ending. <laughs> okay, it's letting me put my name first. Sure. And he must be past that, right? You can't do this to me, game. You can't do this to me. I've worked very hard for that. I deserve my closure. My, 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 I need, I need closure. I need closure. I need. I, I, you guys, you need to congratulate me down in the comments below. <laughs>